Hey all, Heretic here, one of the Hearthstone Battleground Player's Guide, and I'm here to bring you the information you need to help you in with Queen Ashara. So get comfy and let's dive in. First, let's talk about the hero power, Ashara's Ambition. This costs zero gold and reads passive. When your warband reaches 30 attack, begin your Naga Conquest. So at any point, be it in the shop phase or in the combat, through any buffs you're receiving from minions or any extra effects from maybe your, your actual quest, once you hit 30 attack at any point, you will change your hero power to Naga Conquest. Now this reads, this costs one gold, discover a Naga. Now you're going to be able to discover a Naga from your current tier down. Nothing you're not have access to yet, but the fact that you're getting a minion for one gold from a discover pool, which is relatively small, is a massive value in a really good hero power once you can get it unlocked. The trick is getting it unlocked. This hero power is cheap, it's effective, and it's all synergistic once you unlock it. So what you need to do is build your board with the mindset of favoring attack. So before we get into the tiering and all that, what you need to do is look at the different minions in each tier and say, hey, which ones are gonna give me the fastest growth and attack? Which ones are gonna favor that? Not just the usual value of economy and you know, health, you're primarily looking for attack because the sooner you can unlock that, now you're getting a Naga every turn for one gold. That's a really good value. So in tiering with the Shara, you need to look, take a look at what families are in the shop. The rule of thumb is three on three, but if your first shop has three Chrome Wings in it, now you might want to change your plan. Chrome Wings are going to gain a lot of attack based on the number of dragons. So you buy the first two, and if no other dragons fell in the shop, Maybe you just start tiering with the pair. You know, that way they're growing faster themselves. Maybe if you get lucky when you buy the first two, another one fills in the shop. Now you could triple and gain even more attack fast. And you could finish it really, really quick. So rule of thumb, three on three. Otherwise, play it by ear. It depends what you have available to you. Warrior curve might be just as effective. Fast basic might work depending what you find when you go to tier two. It might fill the shop with things that are perfect. So don't set yourself in any one pattern. Find the pattern that works for your particular shop. Now, when it comes to the rewards I'm looking for when I'm playing Ashara, now these are mine. These are the ones I've seen people use. They might be better, they might be worse, but these are the ones I know work. Kidnap Sack is really good value. You can use it, if worst case scenario, to return one of your minions to your hand just for an extra use of one of their spell crafts. You know, get that one in particular you need to give you an extra Divine Shield, an extra Wind Fury. You could use it to get a minion out of the shop for free. So it's versatile. You can use it for a few different things. And since it's spellcraft and Naga like spellcraft, it just feels right. Evil Twin takes one of your minions on the board, the one with the highest health, and gives you a copy of it, an exact copy of it. So it goes without saying, when you have a hero power that is going to give you Nagas who have a ton of spellcraft, which is targeted utility buffs, you can build a monster. You can give it Wind Fury. Divine Shield. You can give it a billion stats. It is a really, really, really effective quest reward because Naga are so good at targeting buffing. And finally, it's hard to do. It's a tough reward. But if you can get Secret Sinstone, every time you triple, get two copies of it. Play an Orgazoa, discover a Naga, get two copies of it. Every time you're discovering something, you're getting two copies of them. And guess what? Nagas discover a lot, especially in the late game. So if you can complete this, if it's even remotely doable, consider Secret Sinstone. Sometimes even when it looks hard to do, as long as it's not crazy hard to do, Sinstone is a very impactful quest with Naga. As for the minions and strategies I like to use when I'm playing Ashara, well, that's a tale of two games. So first you have the early game. The early game, you're looking to get your attack to 30. Most of these minions you'll probably throw away and never come back to by the end of the game. There are scenarios where you will, but typically no. Typically these early minions are gonna go away pretty fast. So what you're looking for are chrome wings if dragons are in. Hey, get some chrome wings, get some dragons, tear up, gain lots of attack, complete quest early. That's the goal. That is the, the most important thing, completing that hero quest early. Quillbores, you get blood gems, buff them up, all set. It's getting a little later now, but Bird Buddy. Bird Buddy, you've got a few beasts. Maybe you've got a couple non-beasts taunted up front. They die. All of a sudden, all your beasts gain the extra attack. All of a sudden, your quest is done. 
happy days. Say goodbye to the beast, unless you triple into some really good beast and you decide you want to keep that route. Legion Overseer, same idea. Your shop is having its attack and health buffed. Every time you're buying a minion, it gets a little higher. These are just small minions that can help push you there, but they definitely can get you there. Pashmer the Vengeful. Hey, every time a couple of your minions die, three to be precise, it's going to kick Avenge, give you a random spellcraft. That's going to be plus attack. These are things that can quickly push you into the second stage of your quest. So keep an eye out for these minions and gobble them up when you see them. Typically in the later game, you're going to be switching to a full Naga comp, but you need to keep your mind open to other options. Obviously, if you triple into something really good, a perfect build of another family, you should take it. You know, early mama bear, can't find anything else. You'd be crazy not to pick up beasts just to help you get further in the game, if not to win with beast. But usually you're going to find yourself preferring Naga. A couple of the neutral minions, though, you always want to consider if you're not too far into Naga. Cave Hydra, Faux Reaper. You can give targeted buffs of Wind Fury. You can give extra attack. You can just give extra health, whatever you want to do with this. So having them sit up front, Divine Shield, smashing through your opponent's board always works. So consider them. Otherwise, it's going to be Naga. If Murlocs are in, hey, grab yourself a ball of minions. Poison that thing. Throw Divine Shield on it every turn. There's a lot of different ways you can make it work. You don't have to just play Naga. The Naga are very good, but always keep your other options open for you too. So the Naga you're going to be looking for, depending on the type of builds you're going to end up doing, depending what minions you find in what order. Eventide Brute, if found early enough and given uh, enough uses of spellcraft, you don't even have to target this thing. It just gets bigger every time you cast any spell. So any coin, any blood gem, any spellcraft, this thing keeps getting bigger. It can scale quite well and is worth hanging around, you know, in your board unless you find a ton of other really good Naga early. Uh, Wave Rider. Hey, the ability to give Wind Fury to your minions is pretty good. Consider, you know, keeping one of your spots for the Wave Rider. Glow Scale. Hey, targeted Divine Shield, any minion you want. Bump with something small, put your giant Wind Fury in slot two, give it Divine Shield. It's going to wreck most everything else. Corrupted Myrmidon, stats. This thing is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, has your Athises, has your Blood Gems, whatever you're buffing this thing with, it's going to keep multiplying its health and attack. Every turn, it's going to get two, whatever its baseline is. And then if you triple it, three. It's a monster in a good cornerstone unit of most Naga board. Critter Wrangler, if you're looking for something to give you permanent scaling now, Every time you target one of your minions with a spellcraft, the Critter Wrangler is going to give this plus two, plus two buff in addition to what it already gives, and that's permanent. Once you look at tier six, obviously Orgozoa. Can't really go wrong with Orgozoa. It's going to generate one Naga every turn for you that you get to discover from the pool of Naga. So odds are you're also going to get another spellcraft or more coins or another Athissa. Orgozoa is always worth picking up if you're looking at playing Naga. And finally, Tide Mistress Athissa. Uh, this is the MVP. This thing is going to buff your entire board. It's going to make your Naga very large. Every time you cast any spell, it's going to buff three Naga plus one plus one. You're going to be using a lot of spellcraft. So Tide Mistress Athissa is definitely the most important of the Nagas you're going to be looking for if this is your final build. And also, Naga are very powerful and Athissa will buff them all. But Athissa is only buffing three Naga. So consider having some neutral minions on that board also. You know, have your three really big Naga, maybe four, five if you have to, and then a couple neutrals to cycle through to have on the board. Hell, one could be your Orgozoa, so it's giving you more spellcraft. It's giving you more of the Naga you need. Make one of the other ones a Manted Queen or a Leroy. That way you can definitely kill whatever they hit on the other side of the board. And then you still have that extra slot, depending how many actual Naga you have, to cycle because you definitely want to make sure you have the cycle slot you know to give you the coins spellcraft in blood gems now when it comes to countering ashara in the early game there's nothing special you have to worry about they're going to have a board of random minions trying to get all the attack they can to get the most value out of their hero power as possible later in the game be prepared for massive stats random divine shields depending how many glow skills they find while they're cycling through all their many discoveries and you know, the usual counters you're going to have to deal with that board. If they're mostly running a couple Divine Shield minions, maybe four if they got really lucky, and a lot of really big stats, you never can go wrong with a Tunnel Blaster. You know, throw a Manton Queen at them. 
Throw a Leroy. Just don't use the Leroy and the Tunnel Blaster together unless you buffed him a little bit. Stuff like that is the easiest way to deal with Naga. But yes, once they get very big and out of control, it's hard to come back from that. Overall, I really enjoy playing Ashara. I mean, the sheer utility, the number of different spellcraft things you have to cast on your minions, to give them different abilities and the way you can reposition them, really makes Naga a unique experience. Not a lot of people were playing Naga that much. They're just not one of the favored tribes because you kind of need to get to the tier five and six minions for them to shine. They don't really have much at the lower tier that's going to work like the high tier stuff does. So they're not as popular with a lot of people. But that versatility of those targeted buffs is what makes them really shine. And the best ones are in the high tier Naga. So take a look. It's well worth your time. You'll have a lot of fun once you figure them out. And yes, it is frustrating those days when you hit none of the ones you need, but when you hit even average, you will find the ones you want. Stay tuned. I have more guides on the way. I hope you learned a few things today and had a good time. I know I did. Thanks for watching. Bye.